Hi everyone, Armored Pants here, and I have another video for you in the American line. This is the Tier 6 M4A 3E8 or the Easy 8 as it's commonly referred to. And this is a jump up from the Sherman 5M, the M4, which we played at Tier 5. As always, we're going to have a look at the tech spec and we will use blitzhanger.com for that. Now, this is a good medium tank. And actually, it's a very good follow-up from the Tier 5 Sherman M4 because it has many, many of the same characteristics. It plays very similarly. It just has few benefits as, uh, which allows it to compete in Tier 6. There's two gun options, um, as before, both 76mm. Um, and the top gun has an extra 300 damage points um, per minute, so therefore I would get that. Top gun also has better reload, like the Sherman before it, 4.8 seconds if you use gun rammer, which I would recommend to do for a medium tank. You get 128 millimeters of pen with AP, 177 with APCR, which you'll need if up tiered or for playing against KV1S, etc. And you get 38 millimeters of pen with HE, which is uh, going to pen light tanks. Muzzle velocity is only 792 meters per second because it has a stumpy small barrel, but that goes up to 1030 meters per second with supercharge and i would use supercharge i would also run then vertical stabilizers because you're medium tank you're going to be firing when moving and therefore vertical stabilizer is very useful um, now as we said um, it has 76 millimeter gun 4.8 second reload which is pretty good the gun handling is decent but because it has this short barrel gun and um, it's not as good as many of its uh, peers especially uh, german tanks it has 12 degrees of gun depression though and 25 degrees of elevation which means it has amazing gun alignment and that's something german tanks don't have it's also the same as the tier 5 sherman so therefore an um, easily transferable skill set from one tier to the other it's fast as 48 kilometers per hour 18 in reverse so it's mobile good for peek -a boom and ambush tactics um, however, it has poor power to weight ratio, so like all American mediums, so therefore it's going to be slow from a standstill, so you need to be aware of that. It doesn't take off quickly. It's fast once it gets going, but it has uh, poor um, uh, speed from a standstill, but it does have excellent traverse, so therefore it is a great brawler. Um, and it can definitely hold its own in a brawling situation, particularly when you look at the armor profile here, you see that front on it does have some armor on the lower plate and even in the middle plate between the uh, bottom plate and the turret it does have some armor and you will get bounces especially if you're top tier it also has this big gun mantlet which covers most of the turret and with that 10 degrees of gun depression and um, it means that you can um sorry 12 degrees of gun depression it means that you can actually um play hull down on this really well so in other words you hide the bottom part of the tank only showing the hull and you can fire down a hill and you present the turret as as the only target to the enemy and because you have this gun mantle which can't be penned which covers most of the turret it's extremely difficult to pen and that's definitely a winning combination in this tank now i will be very honest with you in terms of tactics with this tank it does struggle a little bit when it's up tiered why? Because, well, it's essentially an upgraded tier 5 tank, so therefore when you go into tier 7, you do struggle a bit. You will need APCR for penning a thing like a KV-1S um, in tier 6, or an IS if you're up tiered front on, you will need APCR to pen it. Um, you can probably find one or two spots on the IS who might be able to pen with AP rounds, but that means that your time on target to make that shot is going to be quite long. And you don't want to get hit for four, 450 damage points by an IS round if you're up tiered. So um, I would load up APCR for being for when you're up tiered because of course you're going to be up tiered, especially if you're grinding after your first 15 games or so, you're going to be up tiered probably every second or third game. So um, so just be aware that um, you need to be f much more cautious with this tank when up tiered because effectively you're playing this um, um, enhanced tier 5 tank and tier 7 but that not that that withstanding once you allow for that this can be an effective tank and it can compete its fast rate of fire its speed um, and its mobility and um, its traverse are all assets its hold down aspect it's all aspects of this tank which make it somewhat competitive and um, even when up tiered now 
um, the um, legendary camo with this is called Shrieking, and this actually is um, camouflage which uh, was on the tank during the Korean War. Um, it's not actually a shrieking face, it is supposed to be an Asian tiger taken from art that uh, GIs saw in Asia when they were serving in uh, in Korea. And um, it, um, uh, it uh, looks like a shrieking face, but in actuality it's supposed to be a fearsome tiger attacking the enemy. We can see here some of the images from the Korean War with the uh, tiger face in the front of the tank. As I said, the camo is available to everybody in the tech tree should you wish it. If you're going to play this tank a lot, then why not um, spend a bit of gold and get it? Uh, you can see here a colorized photo of uh, the um, Easy 8 um, in action uh, in Korea. Um, and of course, the Korean War was um, very important because without it, we wouldn't have things like LG and Hyundai. Um, and obviously, uh, they're very important things for today's life. So thank you for the sacrifice of um, all the men um, that served in uh, in that war. To um, uh, all joking aside, uh, to um, allow us um, to visit Korea today and to. Um, um, you know, uh, experience all the wonders of that amazing country. I've been to Seoul myself a couple of times, and um, it very it really is a a great a great place to visit. The only thing I would say negative about Korea is K-pop. Fuck me, that is awful, um, and probably one reason why um, would one advantage if the North had won. Anyway, um, we digress. Let's go back to the tank as it is in play. So. Here's the M483 a Easy 8 Sherman. So um, I'm just buying it on this account now for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to use uh, XP to, uh, free XP I have to um, get the upgrades. And you can see that next then you're going to get up to the T20. We're going to have a review on that as well. And um, now here is the legendary, the Shrieking Cam at 600 gold. Um, so I have some gold, so I'm going to buy that. And I'm just going to apply that then to all summer, winter, and desert. If you're going to spend the money on the legendary camera, you should use it for all, um, all the map types. So let's have a look at the setup. So I am going to go for um, adrenaline, and then I'm going to go for two repair kits. Um, and I am going to go for Coca-Cola because I want to enhance the view range because one of the roles medium tank is spotting. Um, gives it a key advantage in the game, so I'm going to run, go for Coca-Cola. I'm going to load up um, um, with um, mostly normal AP rounds, some APCR in case I'm up tiered, and a bit of HE should I come across light tanks. Um, and then we can see the um, equipment loadout. Um, I'm going to uh, use um, I, I'm going to use um, gun rammer. I'm going to use supercharger. I'm going to use vertical stabilizer and the combat power. Um, and I'm going to use optics to enhance view range. I'm going to use toolbox, and I'm going to use um, more frequent um, provisions. Um, I particularly, if you have, I've got a fast loading gun, I always go to use provisions more frequently. Okay, so let's roll. Let's take her out for her first game. Um, it looks good with the shrieking camo. I have to say, um, if you do have the 600 gold and you're going to play the tank a lot, um, it looks great. Um, so worthwhile investing in if you're only going to use this tank just to grind upwards but then just get the standard camo no point wasting money if you're not going to be coming back and playing this it is a favorite particularly amongst american gamers because it is a legendary tank um, in american military history it served it's the sherman is the most produced tank ever and um, by any country and it served its country very well both in the second world war and later on then in the korean war too um, and it has been a workhorse and a great servant to the military forces of its of its host country and um, therefore uh, quite rightly has legendary status so therefore it's very popular all the Shermans are very popular amongst American gamers and if you're an American gamer watching this uh, firstly hello and thanks very much for um, uh, subscribing to the channel and um, if you are a fan of the Easy 8 which I know many of you are then definitely it's worthwhile getting this shrieking camo uh, Apart from the fact that it looks great, it's also something which has particular historical significance to um, to US armed forces and therefore to American gamers. Um, as an Irish person, honestly, um, we don't have um, any tanks or we don't really have anything to do with um, uh, all of our uh, 
military prowess was fought in other people's armies, so we never actually developed anything. Although the submarine was invented by an Irish person, so there you go. But there are no submarines in Blitz either, so... So, uh, I'm digressing and I went off on an old tangent there, as I often do, um, for another um, side effect of being Irish. Now, here I'm up against my uh, peer, right? Um, what, rather than just um, what he's doing, sitting there, Queen, oh fucking hell, Jesus, this Queen, this Harry and Meghan thing, holy fuck, how's this news when the world is literally on fucking fire? Anyway, uh, get back to the game, um, as you can see, this guy get caught out, got caught out in the open, I have cover and I'm utilising my fast reload, my mobility and my strong um, turret. Um, and I was actually able to put in huge amount of damage on him and he found it very difficult to pen me In fact most of the damage I took was from that round. I got right up the butt from the other side of the map um, Now I'm gonna roll back into some cover here, and I'm gonna try to uh, put some shots Across I'm gonna go uphill here because I'm gonna use soft cover and I'm gonna use my gun depression See if I can put some shots in on these guys across now you can see here that I have a couple of targets the BDR uh, side on and to the back is going to be no problem for me to pen. Um, but back on the KV-1S I can pen. But you saw front on you have difficulties. Uh, particularly over distance because even with using supercharge you have low, um, you have very low muzzle velocity. Um, and of course the short, shorter barrel gun means that you have um, less penetration. Um, so this is just basic physics and we've discussed that in a couple of other in a couple of other videos as well so um i want to cap now because they have two bases and um one of the key uh, tenets of playing supremacy is to cap and to take bases we've discussed this before on channel but many many times you see tanks losing uh, sorry teams losing um, games when they have five tanks compared to two um, or six compared to one as we have in this because they don't cap um, and you see that they're running around looking for um, um, the last remaining enemy tank particularly if it's a fast moving um, uh, you know, slide tank or something like that they're not watching the points and they end up losing and all of a sudden the countdown goes and the game is over Leopard almost gets me killed here by blocking my circle of death but you can see um, you know, the tank is mobile agile when you're up against heavy tanks and um, can do be very effective and um, I was sloppy coming into my approach on the circle of death there but I knew that I had um, the hit points to take around from him and he's the last tank so I just wanted to get some extra uh, damage points in so I happy to sacrifice some of my hit points with him and uh, now he has a really long reload so uh, once I'm in uh, close to him then I can get around him no problem you saw that tank is an excellent brawler excellent circle of death um, against um, heavy tanks. If you're up against a light tank, something more maneuverable, um, use your frontal armor to ram them. You can use your frontal armor to track them, uh, blow out their modules, and um, keep your armor face onto them. They'll find it difficult to pen. Also, you're a very high target. So if you're up against a AMX or something which is very low, um, it's difficult for him to get the elevation to actually pen you very effectively. So um, those tactics work very well in that respect and if you're up against a heavy tank well you saw there just use your speed and mobility get around them use your uh, excellent traverse and keep away from his gun the um golden rule of um circle of death or brawling is if you can keep the enemy's gun away from you everything else just falls into place the one golden rule that's all you need to do just keep their gun away from you and um, it doesn't really matter what you do thereafter there are lots of different techniques lots of different um Contributors and youtubers will tell you different things, but the golden rule is just keep the gun away from you and uh, You'll have a you'll have a good game and you'll be able to to to, to take them out and I've get a look at game two here and um, This is on a uh, temple last temple and um, now because I'm in a medium tank I am gonna go to C C is where you need to be um, on this map if you're in a medium or light tank you should be spotting up the enemy um, and C actually the terrain around C in this map is perfect for medium tanks and light tanks and it's particularly perfect for American medium tanks why well because the um, combination of gun depression and the strong uh, t um, turret in the American tanks means that the hilly terrain here 
is perfect for um, for for American tanks. So there are many many places around C here where you can get into a position where you're hold down and you can use your gun depression and fast rate of fire to do significant damage. And one of those positions is right here. You can see that once I cap, I'm going to be able to come up uh, to the top of this uh, small hill. And I'm going to be able to put in rounds like this without, without exposing any parts of my tank that can be panned. And again, we see how powerful a tool this gun depression is. Just look at that. Hardly any of my tank exposed beautiful shot right into the top of the Sherman Firefly again wait for him to turn his turret front on your side the turret can't be pinned once he turns he exposes the vulnerable side of the turret and then it's a uh, game over lovely shot into him using the tough frontal armor on the uh, bottom part of this tank to ram the uh, poor little AMX you see the fast reload in this tank is great it means you're able to get shots on target Shots onto the reds time and time again, um, and of course the um, uh, gun alignment means that those shots more often than not pen in. You can see again how good a brawler is, how flexible it is. Putting that front armor on, and together with my allies, we take out that T thirty four eighty five. Again, you see, um, you know, having that fast reload really makes this an effective medium tank because you're able to put shots onto the enemy more often than you can at say a German or Russian medium. Uh, the gun alignment with that 12 degrees gun depression uh, really means that, and 25 degrees of elevation really means that uh, you're able to line up targets better and more frequently in this tank than you can in other tanks and certainly than you can in its peers. One of the disadvantages you saw there when I was trying to get the shot onto the Jagdpanzer was um, the uh, short barrel gun and the poor muzzle velocity let's say compared to a German gun means that that shot went high wide and handsome and whereas if you're in a German tank coming across there you would have probably smashed into that the Jagdpanzer um, but of course this tank has other advantages so you just need to bear in mind that it's um, its uh, muzzle velocity and its gun handling is not as good as a German tank um, but it has other advantage more frequent um, um, uh, rate of fire um, and of course it has that gun alignment, gun depression and gun elevation which is excellent. Um, now this uh, VK he's decided to come to the party he just wants a piece of me uh, he kind of definitely decided that he's gonna um, put some rounds into me take, try to take me out but um, my allies have come to help me, plus I have um, that really fast reload. And when you drop adrenaline, it's just awesome. Adrenaline still drops, so I'm going to be able to put more rounds into this KV too. And clear him off as well. So there you go, a very good game in this tank. Uh, on a very good map for this tank, delivering another mastery badge. Um, over 3.1k damage, which in a tier 6 medium is something special. And any tier 6 medium, any tier 6 tank that's going to deliver over 3k damage is definitely um, a tank which is going to be fun to play, right? Um, you saw on that um, map that this tank is very effective when you have hilly terrain. Using that gun alignment, using that gun depression um, and that gun elevation, it's fantastic and it's definitely, it's definitely a map that lends itself to those tactics. Um, and to this winning combo of that gun depression and that strong turret armor. Um, yeah, it has disadvantages, of course. This tank has the short barrel, the poor muzzle velocity, doesn't have huge pen, but a rate of fire. And if you use APC or when you're up tiered, it's definitely going to be effective. Now, this tank does struggle a little bit when it's up tiered, and we didn't look at an up tiered game here. Um, so just be aware that when you're up tiered you need to be a bit more cautious and you're going to need to use APCR because you want to have a shorter time on, on target. So let's have a recap. Um, this is a good medium tank um, and it's perfect practice for the higher tiers. Um, its credit coefficient is poor, it's 97% which is very low, third lowest in its tier. So if you're grinding be aware of that but it's significantly better than the M4 before it. It's a continuation of the M4 so therefore easy skill transfer. As we said before, in many ways it's just an upgraded t um, tier 5 M4. Use the top gun and load up an AC APCR, you're going to need it when you're up tiered. 4.2 reload is great, 
160 dp uh, per round 200 max roll um but this is quite low if you get up tiered right but of course the rate of fire helps poor power to weight ratio is slow from a stop start but that's the same with all american medium tanks but the traverse is great so it's a great brawler and that more than makes up for the poor stop start if you're brawling and the gun alignment is just amazing it's just amazing so utilize that particularly if you're on a map with a lot of hills on it because the gun depression and turret is a winning combo every time you saw there the shots i was taking on the second game hardly any of the tank exposed and able to put in rounds it's a top tier bully um, like the tier 5 itself but if you're up tiered of course be more cautious and be aware of your lower pen and your lower dp numbers so cheers much thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful i hope you'll enjoy the easy eight it is a good tank to play and a legendary tank and um, from the most produced tank of all time so i guess all remains for me to say is pants off